What's going on, my friends? We're finally here, back to the RoboTaxi report with our latest information on 11.4.4. I'm gonna try to keep this short and sweet to the point, that way I can get back out there and get some more testing, because as you can see on the screen, we are only at 10 trips on 11.4.4 so far. And what you're seeing is all of version 10 and version 11, both of them together. This is, this is everything I've recorded. The yellow being the success percentage or what I've referred to as reliability rating and the blue with the number being the quantity of trips done from 1081 all the way up till now on 11.4.4. So we'll focus in here on just version 11 starting with 3.4 through 3.6, 4.2 and 4.4. And what a lot of you can see right off the bat is that we are going the other direction. With the first 10 trips on 4.4, we're only at 80%. We've had two failures, which when you think about it, 80% or only two failures out of 10 trips prior to 4.4 would have been remarkable. It would have been the highest we'd seen. But these 56 trips on 4.2 at 93%, only four failed customer trips over 56 trips, it redefined expectations for myself and hopefully for you as well, showing what the system can do. So 4.2 is sort of the new bar. That 93% is what I want to be seeing or greater going forward. Uh, not too much further in the other direction. Granted, this is early. You know, I do want to hedge that 10 trips is not anywhere near 56 or the 101 trips done on 11.3.6. That's why I like to get as much data as I can before updating. And in the case of 4.4, I waited a solid week to make sure I had a good, thick, robust sample size for 4.2 to better measure against and justify the 93% rating. Because if I had only done a couple of trips, you could easily write that off as a one-off. Who cares? Yeah, you did five trips and they were all great. What if you did 50? Well, here we got 56. And I want to highlight how important that is as a sample size when looking at 4.4. So hopefully going forward, we see this maybe just being some teething issues with 4.4 .4 and it'll start to tick the other direction. I'm giving it its full week on chill and then average and assertive. Over time with enough data, we'll be able to actually see if the different modes actually have significant difference in how they perform. But as of right now, it seems pretty negligible. Real quick before we go forward into some of the causation behind this 80% success here with 4.4, .4, it's important to redefine what a successful robo-taxi trip is because it's not as clear as it should be for some. So it means that you have to imagine that I'm not there and the car has to be able to complete the task. Getting a customer from curb to curb, like you would expect a taxi, a bus, you know, Uber and Lyft, we can get a bit specific getting like right up to somebody's house or driving through a parking lot. Um, as we go forward, that might become the next added level of difficulty if it's got curb to curb solved but as we see here that's still a challenge 80 percent is not good enough for a reliable transportation service but i do think these numbers are good enough to start a beta of that service tesla should start the tesla network and get safety drivers like me and some of the folks of like you out there using uber and lyft with this as a good starting source of that data from a tesla network from an actual transportation service platform but i've definitely noticed with 4.4 that we have reintroduced some staging concerns getting into the wrong lane and then missing a turn. It's had a couple glaring examples of that. And also we've lost a little bit of that finesse that we had with 4.2, that feeling of, of confidence behind the system. 4.4 has definitely reintroduced a lot of jerky, uneasy movements that will no doubt get you know resolved over time, but I'm here to show you what's going on now. So don't shoot the messenger. I'm just giving you the information. Take with it and do what you will. But on the note, as we go into causation here, you know, these are all the reasons that, uh, or you know, these are just the reasons on 4.4 currently that a disengagement would occur or a robo-taxi trip would be considered a failure. If I have to hit the turn stock, if I have to take over because it's getting too uncomfortable, if it's going to miss turns and excessively reroute and waste a customer's time, these are all failure conditions at this level of expectation. I hope you heard that part. At this level of expectation. I'm not your average tester just going trip to trip and seeing how it performs. I'm measuring this against transportation services like Uber and Lyft and what you would expect out of a competent driver. In the short amount of time that I've had 4.4, we have had two red wheel disengagements, which is a little alarming. Those are really just unavoidable no-go scenarios. If that happens, I take over, that trip's a failure. Whether it was a you know low setting sun or early sunrise, maybe a photon overload into the vision system, or if you lose enough traction and the system detects an unsafe scenario, it gives you the red wheel and forces you to take over. These are really out of my hands. And two of them in my first like two days of using this system with customers was a little disconcerting. Uh, two staging issues, pretty glaring ones, just 
knowing it needs to, for example, go left to go south down the 163, and it sees it's projected along the navigational route, but it gets into the right lane, which is the northbound entrance to 163, and I have to take over to avoid it going north and wasting a good 10 minutes to get to an actual clover and come back down the 163. That's a failure, I'm sorry. It needs to choose the right move to not waste time like that. The two discomforts you're actually seeing on here have a lot to do with this persisting merging behavior. It's been shown that the system is not doing a great job of actually getting out of its merge lane and onto a highway in a timely manner, forcing yourself into those moments where you have the jerk that's like on the shoulder trying to get ahead of everybody and cut in at the last minute. FSD should not be doing that, and I've had two cases where I've had to get involved because it creates an extremely awkward, uncomfortable scenario for the passenger and myself. It needs to get that turn signal on and merge in and stagger with everybody. I've shown examples on uh, Twitter and YouTube of it doing this through some crazy intersections on the 163 where it zippers in with everybody perfectly. But there are some merging scenarios where it's not, and it's consistently not performing right. And I, that's an issue that Tesla's working on with the 11 build, the version 11 build, because it's been one of the lasting complaints from drivers across the fleet since I've seen people reporting on 11.4 or even on 11.3, well, basically version 11 in totality. I think the original testers, the OG YouTubers and such on version like 11.3.1 loved it. It was great. I never got to experience that one. I came in with 11.3.4 and then got six and then jumped into 4.4 or 4.2 and 4.4. But apparently after 11.3.1 or 3.3, the merging problems creeped up and have been a lasting concern. It'll, it'll get solved again. I think all of this is going to get solved. This is just reporting on the here and now. And this one legal disengagement you're seeing is actually counted from the testing that I did up in Santa Barbara. Now, some of you might not agree with what I'm about to say, and this is part of me being transparent. Because I knew that that was a failure condition, and because I knew I was going to deliberately put the vehicle through that failure condition, double tapping those disengagements into this causation tree that is measuring overall robotaxi performance and general performance doesn't seem appropriate because similar to the gauntlet challenge videos, which I am going to do one on 4.4 here soon, and this intersection we did that stemmed from Ross Gerber and Dan O'Dowd, you know, that is a case where I am deliberately doing something that I know the system is likely going to fail at for testing's purposes, and it doesn't belong in a general category looking at robotaxi performance. So hopefully that resonates with a lot of you, and me just telling you this and being open about it should quell any crap in the comments about me trying to favor the system. If you followed me for a while that I do not mind making the Tesla Super Bulls upset or the Hyper Bears upset, I'm here for the facts. So love me or hate me, I don't care. This is what you get, but you can at least count on my integrity. At least I hope so. Stepping back from the causation donut, we'll go ahead and take a look at the regional map, which is kind of expanded since I did some trips in Ventura when I was leaving Santa Barbara. Um, and it did well, you know, I did two trips up in Ventura and it was a success. It wasn't anything crazy. Now, I will say I was impressed with the trip up and the trip back. I didn't have any issues on 4.4, but it's mostly just cruising on the highway, so it's not really that difficult. I would expect it to do a trip up to Santa Barbara with minimal effort as a standard thing. That should just be a no-brainer. Now, before we look at 4.4 specifically, this is the sort of final spread of 11.4.2 and the areas that it was driving as a RoboTaxi service. All these area recordings, these are specifically RoboTaxi trips. My personal drives don't get fed into this because, frankly, it's irrelevant. So this is all coverage of areas driven as a RoboTaxi, and most of it's looking really good on 4.2. The largest reason for National City being more orange and kind of falling into that intermediate category between 34 to 64% or 66% is because we only had, I think, two trips in that area, and that was two of the failures of the four. So though 4.2 did really well, it is a good indicator that there is always room to improve on a paid customer service. 4.4 again, by comparison, is still quite a bit small. A couple of trips in Ventura when I was up in Santa Barbara and then coming back down into my area and getting as much work as I could in the last couple of days amidst everything else. Again, don't worry, this is still only about 10 trips, so this will fill out as we get more rides with Uber and Lyft and we'll be able to paint a better picture for how the system is performing compared to 4.2 and others and see where it really sits. I think that it's too early to say that this is you know, that much worse than 4.2. Could just be that it's had a harder time in the beginning. We'll see how it levels out. But every trip is recorded and put through this dashboard to show you guys. And speaking of the dashboard, here is the total view showing all the information coming in. And this is over 
everything from all of my very early information from 10.2 to 10.8 as well as up to now with 11.4.4 and you can see everything displayed here quite beautifully thanks to Elias on Twitter. Here in the dashboard now as we wrap up you can see this is all of the open data on version 11 since I've been using it. We've gone over 6,000 kilometers with about a 2773 split city to highway and done 220 robo taxi trips. I take this seriously and our cumulative success over all the version 11 builds right now is about 70% which is you know that's not bad that's pretty good and I'm excited to see that go higher and higher. We've got almost 100 hours on version 11 and that will continue to rise as well. Uh, this Robotex report would have been out a lot sooner if I didn't have my 10 plus hour detour up to Santa Barbara and back to test out that intersection but I'm glad I did it you know it was good to get my eyes on it and bring some trusted objectivity to the scene. I think I might have to go back just just to clarify some things thanks to some recent claims that have come out of that area but that's what I'm here for I'm here to actually give you the reliable testing and rather than beat a dead horse on that you can just follow me and decide for yourself based on the information I'm showing you and if you see anything that you have questions about please let me know ask down below you can find me and the guy responsible for the actual dashboard behind the data on Twitter I'm on Twitter, of course, as Cyberlift, and Elias is on Twitter as well. Our information will be on the screen for you guys. But I think that about covers it for today. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and get more testing done. Thank you so much for the view, and please leave all your comments and feedback down below. Take care.